Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Cage Talk. Today, my guest, he fought in the UFC, he's fought in Bellator, he's fought in shake, uh, shark fights, uh, RFA, he's fought in KSW. We have the assassin. We have Houston Alexander. How you doing, buddy? Victory fighting championship as well in Omaha, man. There we so, go. You know, I've, been, we, I've been fighting all over the place, so... What's going on with you, Alex, man? Finally, hey, we finally got this done, man. So I'm on your show. Yeah, man. It's uh, I felt like I, I know you the most just because I've talked to you so much about trying to <laughs> get something together. But uh, again, I understand you're a busy guy, I, and also you're a DJ. You're a DJ. Yeah, as well. But I do a lot of things, man. DJ is one of them. So, you know, you know yeah, and I've been DJ for a long time. So yep. I've, I've probably been DJ just as long as I've been fighting. I heard you're pretty good with uh, graffiti as well, huh? <laughs> yeah, I've been doing graffiti ever since I was uh, 12 years old. Yep. yep. So still, you know, I still paint the occasional train. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. But, uh, <laughs> but again, th thank you so much for, for coming, uh, coming yeah. on the show and stuff. I do appreciate your time. No doubt. So let's, let's talk a little bit about your career, man. Let, let's talk a little bit of how you, you started mixed martial arts what was the first practice that you you did was there anything that kind of motivated you into to fighting or was it something that you kind of had to do well you know alex i, I think it was forced into fighting because i'm you know i'm originally from east st louis illinois and those kids uh back in the back in the day man we, they didn't play they put them hands they put them dupes up mm. and um uh, i think i did the, the way it started for me was just being tough on the streets you know, you know, my, I remember my first fight ever being uh, with these five guys trying to take my candy bar off the playground. And, uh, nah, it wasn't getting to my candy bar that day. <laughs> I, was too, I was too damn hungry to give up my candy bar. And, and Alex, and it was a Snickers, too? Oh, I, hell no. Hell no. <laughs> <laughs> I fought them guys off, man. And guess what? They didn't take my Snickers. There you go. And so and so, but you know, I, I've always been the tough kid, man. You know, it's it's in it's in the bloodline, and uh, you know, we you know I come from a, a bloodline of fighters, man, and, and that you know, just I got a lot of uh, street cred from uh from, from putting my hands up. You know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Uh, what was your first practice? Where did you do boxing? I think I was. Well, my one we one of my first practice was boxing, mm -hmm. uh, CW Boxing Club back in the day here in Omaha. Um. And then, you know, I picked up wrestling, you know, you know uh, Joe Emerson Youth Center, you know, because they had one of the better programs in the country. So I was, I was dibbling and dabbling in, uh, in boxing and wrestling, as all kids do when they're, when they're growing up. You know what I'm saying? I played all sports, but I just happened to be good uh, at, you know, at, at boxing and wrestling. Gotcha. And when did you ever think about it actually becoming a career? Did you ever think about it, or is it just something? Oh, you know, I never thought about it. No. Uh, MMA becoming a career, you know, I, I got into MMA on a humbug. A friend, a friend of mine, Annie Houston, who I used to uh, b-boy with, we, you know, with our, our crew, the Alliance saw b-boys and b-girls, we used to open up for national acts all over the country. Uh, but, you know, she had went to a bar one night, and, uh, and I believe it was a club amnesia. And the club amnesia was having these uh, sign-ups for MMA. Mm -hmm. And she kind of she knew that I, I kind of dabbled in boxing and wrestling, so she she asked me to come out with her friends to watch these guys do these uh do these matches in this bar, and so you know you would go and sign up and you would get into these matches and uh, she dared me to get in the ring with the guy who was the wing, um he, he won like four weeks in a row he was some mm -hmm. big guy from uh, from a uh, UNO which is our our local college here okay. big wrestler guy. I signed up, and uh, it was probably one of the bloodiest matches I, I've been involved with. Because I, when I hit the guy in his nose, he bled like like a water fountain. <laughs> <laughs> so, but uh, and, and the bar was so back then you could smoke in the bars. It was so smoky, so it was a smoky bar. Sign ups. It was, you know, it was my first glimpse of MMA, man. That that's when I got involved with uh, MMA. Oh early man, early two thousand. That's pretty intense. That seems like something I like out of a. You see that like out of a, a movie, right? You got yeah, the smoky you know, bar and shit. It was crazy. Like, uh, I dare you get in the ring. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna get in the ring because you know I have that personality. Mm -hmm. Went in there, being this guy went at it, 
And uh, matter of fact, we couldn't finish the match because it was so smoky. And uh, you know, you, when you get all that smoke in your lungs, it's a wrap. So you know, yeah. we didn't. I, I ended up whooping his ass though, and he never came back after that. Wow, wow. So, was, was there anything after that? Um, did you look into more, more into um, <coughs> MMA? Or after well, that, happened, uh, the, the promotion that was uh, putting it on saw how yeah. intense I fought, mm -hmm. and so they asked me to come back the next week, and uh, and the next week, and the next week, I was just mowing them down, brother, because you know, I, again, I already, I already had hands, I, you know, and I was, I was already, you know, the strong guy, and I, and I knew how to wrestle a bit, so I was just mowing them down. Nice. What was your your amateur career? Yeah, um, so the production, uh, the pro pro production company who was doing it had me come back. And uh, he here's the thing, Alex, I've never been an amateur. Oh, really? I've always gotten paid. I got paid that night, got paid the next night I came, the next week I came. So when you're getting paid, that, that automatically makes you a professional. Definitely. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, how, how much did you get paid that fight? Oh, man, what, $400? That's not too bad. Yeah, but you know, before come on, early two thousand four hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah, you know, I paid I paid rent that week. So there we go. <laughs> all right, all right. That, that, that's always uh, you know, interesting to find out, especially yeah, man. You um, know, just you know, it's all these quirky little things that that happen in life, and I didn't I didn't expect it for it for it to happen that way, but you know, it happened. Exactly, and and what led you um after that? What led you eventually to to landing a spot in the UFC again? Your UFC debut. I believe it was UFC 71, and it, you fought Keith Jardine, which was awesome. But we'll talk mm -hmm. about that, obviously, in a little bit later. But yeah. let's, let's talk about uh, well, your path to the UFC. Well, uh, you know, after, after going into the, uh, the, the bar and doing what I did in the bar, uh, the production company, which was uh, Chad Mason Presents, uh, started signing me up for all these other fights in other cities. So I traveled all over the Midwest, man, just doing, you know, and, and, and on top of that, Chad Mason was actually a mixed martial artist himself. And he started showing me, you know, did these different art forms, you know, you know the jujitsu and, and the, uh, the kickboxing and all those things. And, you know, uh, along with going to other gyms, uh, Mick Doyle was one of the gyms, all these gyms I used to go to, uh, as I start progressing, and so, and as I start traveling and, and, and progressing in, in the fighting, um, we end up meeting with Monty Cox. Monty Cox was a, was a bigger promotion with, with Extreme Challenge. And, but Monty Cox is one of the more premier uh, promoters of MMA because he got a lot of UFC champions under his belt. Okay. And uh, during my progression, I got in one of, his, uh, one of his tournaments. And it was a heavyweight tournament. I was, man, I was 210 fighting guys twice my size. So I just happened to get in one of, uh, one of Monty Cox's uh, tournaments, and it was a heavyweight tournament. And, uh, man, you had, you, all the, you had Secret Service guys and police wow. guys and all these guys that were in this, uh, in, in this, this pot of fighters that, that was trying to win. And I think the, uh, the, the, the prize for winning was a little money and us going out to, to Hawaii to, to compete in an in event out there. And I was like, oh, hell no. I'm gonna, I got to win that, the money. And, I, and I'm going I want a, free, a free trip too. Yeah. So I went out there, man, and, and the guy they put me up against was the guy that was supposed to, they thought was going to win it all. Went out there and whooped his ass in 53 seconds. You're out of there. <laughs> the guy whooped his ass in maybe 40-some seconds. You're out of there. And then it was the last guy I had to face who ended up, I ended up getting a, uh, uh, I don't know. It was, it was, it was like a, it's a disqualification because the guy claims I, I, uh, I need him in his face when I was, when it was actually his body. Oh, so that, when, that, yeah, when that was uh, what's his name? His was name that? was Todd. His name was Todd. What, what, what's his name? Todd. I'm not for sure. <laughs> I'm not. All I know is some guy. He he claims I hit him in in the face. It, clearly, I didn't, but, you know, they asked if he wanted to continue. Guess what? He didn't want to continue. I wonder why. Mm -hmm. But anyway, uh, a after after doing that, um, I was asked by by Monty Cox, hey, well, how come you're not fighting, you know, on uh, another level? I was like, you know, I never really thought about it. I'm, ju I'm just out there competing, and I'm just out there, out there doing my thing. I'm not thinking, thinking about it. I'm thinking about getting in the ring, doing it getting paid and keeping them moving. 
So a couple of weeks passed after that, and uh, I get a call when I'm at the park with my children, and it's Monty Cox. And Monty asked me, hey, uh, would you be interested in uh, in an upcoming fight? And with me, I'm, man, I'm always gun ho. I'm, again, that's the type of person that not only I am. I said, yes, let's go. He said, well, it's kind of on a, on a larger scale. I said, you know what? How much does this guy weigh? I don't care how much this guy, as long as he doesn't, as long as he's not 300 pounds, I'll do it. Mm -hmm. And I said, how much, how much is the, uh, the fight? How, how, what, what is the pounds on the fight? And he said 205, but I said, sign me up. And uh, I said, who's the guy? And he said, Keith Jardine. I was like, who? Because again, I didn't follow the UFC back then. You know, because I was already active. I yep. was actively doing my thing. So, you know, why I'm following you know, I just didn't follow UFC. I, I was doing, I was active. And so once I found out, okay, this guy's were, he, he's uh, fourth or third in the world at the time. I didn't know that. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. I just was happy that he was 205 because I've been fighting, <laughs> fighting guys 350, two, 250, you know, two, 220. And it was just fine for somebody to beat my weight. Yeah. I, was, I, was, I was glad to see it. Yeah. Man. yeah um... How, how was that, you know, going into the UFC? Was it like another fight? Like, how how's your preparation for that? Because I remember, well, you know, they they were Alex. They weren't gonna let me fight at first. No, because they they because they you know they thought I was a uh, an amateur. They didn't know that I had you know by by this time from early two thousand up until two thousand seven, I, I had over well over a hundred fights. Mm -hmm. I would fight you know five times in one night. But see, you know, back then they didn't have the YouTube. Yeah. Nor did they have, uh, you know, they didn't have all the stuff they have today to where they could uh, monitor, hey, the, you know, seeing this guy fight. So yeah. they had nothing on me except for a whole bunch of VHS videotapes of people uh, uh, were filming back then. Yeah, I think um, I, I think they had, like, when they did the USC debut, because I watched the fight not too long ago, and I think okay. they mentioned how, like, you were just, like, a newcomer and this and that, and, like, they, yeah. the, they made it seem like, like you were just – a random person they they picked off right <laughs> fresh off <laughs> fresh off the block huh <laughs> exactly and and, and, the, and then they say you know which i understand now like they they said it was an upset but if you looked at your record and you saw your you know the people you fought then it wouldn't be an upset because at that time they they thought it was an upset because there was again like you said there was no background history on you so they didn't know who you fought how many fights you had so they're thinking this is just a random guy that came in and, and beat Keith Jardine's ass, but well and Joe Joe Silva at the time, uh well, again, they was gonna they, they the commission wanted to stop the fight because they didn't know they thought I was gonna get killed. Oh really? And my my manager, which was Monty Cox, convinced them that hey, this guy's gonna compete. Let him compete. Go in. Mm -hmm. Don't worry about it. So they let they let it go. And then um I think the night before um I fought Keith. I, I went up to Dana White, who was randomly in the hallway, and I told uh, Dana, I'm going to whoop your boy's ass tomorrow. I said, uh, I said you watch. I said, I'm away. He was like, ah, whatever. And I was like, oh, I said, look, man, okay, you, you watch. I said, I'm going to whoop your boy's ass tomorrow. Next day, there we go. Um, <laughs> it, it, was, it was crazy, man. You think uh, uh, Dana White – pulls for certain fighters or certain athletes or you think that, do you think he pulls for certain athletes or certain fighters like what you said like you you told him that you're gonna whip uh his boy's ass and he's like oh whatever you think that's just um you know i think i think dana is a business fan mm -hmm. and i think i think uh he yeah I, I think he's fair to a certain degree because you know if you, if you go out there and fight you know and i'm just now finding that out now because you know I didn't have to have that you know I didn't have the experience on a large scale like that before, but um, I fought all over the place. I fought in front of five people, five hundred people, five thousand people. But now you know that scale, twenty thousand people. That none of that stuff even faced me because I've, I've fought all over the place. Mm -hmm. And so now I see from a business point of view that if you go out there and compete and give the audience what they want, you know they'll 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 reevaluate you and, and you know they'll they'll uh, they'll promote you as such. So you know you just you know you just gotta understand that you gotta be promotable, but you gotta be exciting as a, as far as a fighter. And uh, you gave uh, everyone a hell of a 
a USC debut as I mean that was probably one of the most memorable. I think they have a picture of after you knocked him out, you're just leaning over him, just Oh, you know, you know, hey, you don't want to know, you don't want to know what I said to you. <laughs> Please tell me because you were, je- oh, I mean, you were, I mean, you were hyped um, up. I mean, Alex, Alex I was, hey man, <laughs> I was so, hey man, I was so mad. You have a, hey, for some reason now, you're just, hey, just, you know, when you get in the ring and you're like, you're, you're, you are this gladiator, but for some reason, I just, I, I just lost it. I didn't hear no audience. I didn't hear nothing. I was just, man, I was just so. I was I was I was super mad at, at the time. I just remember, and I just I, I just remember telling uh, Keith when he fell. I said I, I told him. I looked over. I said I said get up, mother, get up. <laughs> I, I was just like get up. Yeah, he he was. Hey, <laughs> I was man, I, hey, man, I was I, I was that mad, man. So yeah, you 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 can tell you were, but you know what? That's one thing I do like when when uh, you would win and stuff is just the emotion on your face and after yeah. there's just so much you're just I, I guess a lot of people don't realize when they fight and stuff there's so much emotion there's so much you know stress on your shoulders that after that yeah, I mean, you're right you're right you're right there's a, there's a lot of stress before you get in the ring there's a lot of stress even after after you get out of the ring man because I, I believe after all that once the adrenaline all came down. The one thing I wanted to do, I remember Alex, it was just laying down. I yep. just wanted to go. I just wanted to lay down. Yeah. After all, all that, and after all that excitement, I just wanted to lay down. Definitely. Uh, your next fight was uh, Italian boxer Alessio Sakara. Yeah. Shout out, like, shout out to Keith and uh, and and those guys. They all shout out to all the guys that I fought because you know it, it's kind of funny. The more I, the more I do in a lot of these interviews, and the more I kind of explain, you know, the situation. I think um, it was a co- the coach of mine, Curly Alexander. And he told me, he said, man, you already know how to fight. You just got to learn, learn how to defend the takedown. And, you know, and this is what Alex, and, and I'm going to kind of explain to your audience, you know, on, on this show, um, that that same intensity that you saw in the first fight, was that, that was me, 100%. But when you start you know, learning all the disciplines and you start cramming all this information, just like, you know, just like in your, uh, I'm going to give you an example for you. If you cram all this information, uh, downloading this, downloading this, downloading this on your phone or computer, what is your phone or computer you used to do? It's going to shut down because you're going to need more it's storage. Shut down. Yep. So, so when you, you know, even as a, a, a professional fighter, you're, you're trying to learn all these different different disciplines all at once. And what, what it does do, it, it takes the ferociousness out of you being, you know, you, you start you start taming the pit bull. Yeah, I get you. So you, got, you, got this, you got this pit bull, all these muscles and, and all this, the, the grit. And everything. But, 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 you know, when you have to uh, think about what you're going to do transitionally, mm-hmm. you know, it, 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 man, you, you're off just a brief second. You're, you're not thinking straight you're, instead of just reacting. And I think a lot of the times, you know, with those great um, – Fights in the beginning, you know, I was just, I would, that was me, instinct. Mm-hmm. And once, once you start going down the line, that was you're just thinking too much. You can't think too much when you when you're fighting, man. You know, I, it's it's a, it's a it's a primal thing. It's something that you you know, it's all it's it's instinct, just like any other animal. Yep. You just, you say to me, it's instinct, your skill, but it's something you have to be doing over and over and over. And that's why I commend the the, the people that are coming up now because when we were coming up, we had to go. Here to this gym, we have to go fly out to LA to go get jujitsu here. Or go go down to Miami and get yeah. kickboxing. Now you Everyone can get all it. the 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 mixed martial arts in one gym. So you know, so I I commend I commend all the people that are coming up right now because I think in my progression in my professional progression on that level, uh-huh. you know, with just you know all the information I got being crammed in, I was just a step off. Do you think that's kind of um, made you, like you were saying, you kind of tamed the pit bull. Uh, you were less aggressive on some of the fights. Let, let's just dive right into it because this is yeah, um, let's go. This, this is one of the uh, ones I, I've been wanting to talk to you about. Uh, the yeah. Kimbo Slice debut. You fought, okay. rest in peace, Kimbo Slice. You fought Kimbo Slice. Now that fight, everyone wanted fireworks, right? Yeah, everyone's expecting two gorillas to, to start exactly. pounding their chests. Yep. Exactly. So. I uh, and Shay, rest <laughs> in peace to Kimbo Slice, man. Yes, sir. Let's get that on top. 
Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Rest in peace, Kimbo Slice. When I was watching that fight, I've noticed, because, again, I watched the first time, and I was like, oh, man, like, it, it didn't live up to expectations. Then I watched okay. it a couple of years later, and I was watching, I believe your strategy was what, to take out his lead leg? Maybe you threw no, out it was, no, it was actually It was actually to, to poke the bear. Okay. Now, when I say poke the bear, if I'm circling, you okay. know, and, and again, there, there was some logic behind it, and I'm following, I mean, I'm following the game plan that was given, okay. and, and, and this is when you're, you're being coachable. Mm -hmm. um, and, I'm, and I'm kicking with my, kicking his lead leg, and we're hoping, because we, you know, because we, we just noticed that if he came in, our counter was going to be vicious. Okay. It would be what it came in. But you know what happened? Uh, as I kicked him to bait him in and circle bait him in, kick him, bait him in, guess what he didn't do, Alex? He didn't, he didn't, he didn't bite. He didn't bite. He just stayed there. He yeah. just stood there. And, 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 and a lot of people give me flack. Well, oh, how come you didn't go do this and do that? No. I was the one moving. Yeah. And so if you think about it, in boxing, what do you have to do? You circle. Yeah. Well, you don't stay in front of the guy. You don't let you know stay in front of the guy. So I was waiting. I'm trying to bait him in with the kicks, have him come in, and the whole time he just stood like this and and followed me. He didn't come nowhere near me, man. Mm -hmm. The first round, first round that was. Hey, he didn't throw one punch. He just watched. <laughs> and back then, Alex, I don't believe um, they even counted kicks because I kicked that man a whole bunch of times. Yeah, so you did. My strike, that, was strike, that was me striking him, striking the body. So, you know, if they, they count leg kicks now, but, you know, back in 09, they, they wouldn't, you know, they were like, oh, man, just nothing. I, I, think, I, think, I think they count the, the takedown back in the day more than a leg kick. Like, yeah. he you down, like, he took you down, okay, he's controlling okay. the fight. And so, yeah, so, so <laughs> that, was, you know, that, that was that, but uh, – no one, no one's. If you go back and watch it from you know from a judge's point of view, but well, I, I still think we won the fight. He got a couple of takedowns, but even after he got the takedown, Alex, I, I went through the back door. I came out the back door. Yeah, he did. I, I got up, and and even and 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 the second round, and I've been explaining this kind of this this whole whole situation uh, since since it happened. Second round, no one notices that when the second time when Kimbo tried to take me down. I, it was a, it's the last 10 seconds of the fight. He tried to take me down. Trino, he thought he got happy because he got one, he got one, one takedown. He tried to take me down again, but this time I ended up on top of him, mm -hmm. directly on top of him. And my, my, I, I, when I, once I got on top of him, I was like, my, my, my hand was up. It was, I was ready to go at him and go pound him right. That would have ended the fight right there. Mm -hmm. Guess what happened? The bell rang. Bell rang in the second round. Go back and watch it. I had, I, 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 as soon as he tried, I, I ended right on top of him, and my hand was just about Talk to start to pounding him. And, uh, and there you go. So if, if, if I had more, if I had 10 more seconds, that fight would have been over. Definitely. Yeah. So, that but, you know, it is what it is. But if you go back, the bait, we were trying to bait the guy in. We weren't going to just go straight at him because that was the problem. Everyone would, would try to go straight at Kimbo. And, you know, and, and everyone was like, did Kimbo hurt? He he put man, he hit me probably three times the whole fight, mm -hmm. and I, I didn't I didn't feel anything. No, my, you see my face was messed up. I was cool, and man, and here's another tip bit that no one knew afterwards is that uh, um, after we all got out the ring, you remember how uh, I forgot the fight where Bones was uh, fighting the uh, Brazil Brazilian that kicked the crap out of his legs oh, a couple of months back. Okay, go on. And the guy, uh, guy's knee gave out, mm -hmm. but he kept fighting. He kept, he kept fighting, even though he tore his, his knee. Um, remember how Jones uh, walked out the ring? He was holding people, he was, right? wasn't he? He was carried out yeah. of the ring. Yeah, he, would, he, didn't, he didn't walk out the ring. Same thing with Kimball. Kimball had a, a, a wheelchair. Really? He couldn't. He couldn't walk afterwards. And your leg kicks I was, in. I was, walking, in your... I was walking around like I was cool. I was good. Leg kicks. I said they didn't count them back then. So <laughs> if, they, 
it, it, even if they would have counted him back then, I would have I would have been cool with a draw. Because mm-hmm. he didn't because he, he didn't do nothing. First round, not one punch was thrown. Mm-hmm. Not by him. <laughs> Interesting. Is that yeah, one of the, the right, only... go back and watch now after explaining that, go back and watch it. No, definitely. I, I'll definitely do that. Because yeah. I watched it not too long ago, then I'll probably watch it again. Is that the only is there any fight in your career that you kind of uh, not regret, but you should have been like, ah, oh, man, I, sh- I should. Oh, sitting out uh, the you know the the Irving fight when he came out, and uh, they they thought he hit me into it, and I, all I did was slip mm-hmm. because if you look because even you know he he oh he got a Superman punch no he did he did he hit me and I slipped back and then the ref just jumped on me I yeah. was like yo you didn't give me ch- you didn't give me a chance to even get up so you know that that was that was something that was regrettable like dude I was I I didn't get you know knocked out. I, I jumped right back up and was headed towards him. And this yeah. guy, guy, okay, that was one that was regrettable. The one, uh, the, the silver fight where, you know, not transitioning out of a, out of a, a ground game and letting, let, letting that slip by because in all my fights, Alex, the pit bull was being tamed. Okay. Each fight, each fight. So, it, it, I, I went into the fights stronger than these guys, mentally stronger than these guys. I knew I had all the the accessories to to, to go into a fight with. Because if you could pick a grown man up with one hand and slam him to the ground, that's when you know you're stronger than anybody that that's in the ring with you. Oh yeah. So, and nobody, you know, no one even remembers that. I remember that shit. That it was like that was the first time I picked a grown man up with one hand and slammed him on the ground. You did, you did, so, the, you did the choke slam, man. You did choke yeah. slam. You see, put, put him on, but see, but again, you 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 can't you can't slip up on, on a on a, a Brazilian black belt. So, yep. you know, but again, if I knew what I knew now, you, it, it, that you know coulda woulda shoulda. Yep. The transition game. So, so who whoever's watching this. The transition game is very important, okay? You got to learn to go from boxing to jiu-jitsu, wrestling, kickboxing. You have to you, you have to transition with no problem, okay? Now, the, back then, again, I'm still learning all these different uh, art forms all crammed into one computer. And eventually, you know, like you said, it, it'll shut down if you just keep cramming it in. Yeah, man. Uh, again, regardless, um, I, I think uh, – everyone that knows you would be proud of your career regardless. And um, let's talk a little bit about what you do now. I, I would like to know about um, <coughs> your foundation and stuff. I, I was reading a little okay. bit on that and stuff like that. So if you like, if you don't mind explaining to some people. Yeah, the foundation is, uh, you know, it was uh, two, two or three years in the making. I've always been told, hey, we should do this foundation. We should do a foundation. And I just didn't have the time because there's a lot of paperwork, Alex. Real, but uh, yeah, but the, what the foundation is is giving back to the community because I've been doing community service as ever since I was 14 years old. That's awesome. And um, what I, what 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 the basis to our organization is is going to the schools and teaching them about hip hop culture. See, because a lot of the kids are growing up in that culture, they they know about rap, but they don't know about the b boy and the dance. They don't know about the art. They don't know about you know, the communication. They don't know all the, the things other than rap. Okay. So, you know, our, our job is to go into these schools and teach the kids about culture. And and, and we, we take in DJs, we take B-boys, we bring in rappers, we bring in people that beatbox okay. the whole nine and teach the kids about culture and, and, and what it's about, music, dance, and art. And, you know, that's, that's one thing that our organization is based off of. Plus, I've been, I've been training people for free for the past 10 years. So, you know, they can go to the site, sign up, and I, I actually train people for free and, oh. and show them how to work work out. And I uh, do public speaking. So a little, little bit of everything with the organization, just giving back to the community. Very, nice. Step the Very nice, man. Very nice. And That's I, all, man. And um, do you have a, you have any uh, of your art lying around, some graffiti and stuff? I know yeah. that. What's up? I got, you know, I was gonna, I got, I got a lot of uh, things that I, that I, um, I've drawn, okay. and so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna take a picture of them and put them online because I do, I, I've done that before. Okay. But you know, I, I still got a lot of stuff, and uh, matter of fact, um, 
I've done something uh, uh, maybe uh, a month or so ago, a couple of months ago, where I did a gym. I did the inside of a gym for 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 a friend of mine who does MMA. So cool. I, you know, I still paint. I mean, I still do all the things I enjoy doing, man. So you know, just just because uh, you you and and I was doing all these things before fighting. Fighting man was just, just a hobby, you know, just like graffiti art is a hobby to me. You know what I'm saying? And 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 b boying those are are hobbies that I'm just happy to be good at, and, and I enjoy it. So I mean, that's that's all it is, man. You don't you don't awesome. stop doing it because you know you you uh, you're not you think you're not successful at this or successful at that. Just keep do it because moving. you love it, right? You do, I do it because yeah, because I love it. And, and matter of fact, with our with with the podcast that we have, because everyone has a podcast, but <laughs> um, we interviewed uh, Shabadoo, uh, who uh, who was the uh, character Ozone on uh, Breakins One and Two, and uh, yeah, he passed man a couple of days ago. Mm. He passed a couple of weeks after we did his interview. So yeah. I believe we have one of the last interviews he did. And so if you if your audience go and you Google Shabadoo, he's probably he's probably one of the uh, premier mere street dancers of, uh, of, of hip hop's generations. And we got to, we were the last ones to interview him, man. So, so that's how deep it is. Wow. Wow. That's how deep I am. I'm embedded in the culture. Definitely. And it's, it's something always, especially something that you're very heavily influenced and that you have a passion for is to kind of right. tell the next generation and stuff like that. Because you know what, to be honest with you, I mean, this has nothing to do with culture or hip hop, but at the same time, I mean, my little sister came over and she only, you know, she never even seen Back to the Future. She doesn't even know what, you get me? You have to, you have to let these kids know that they don't know anything. The half of them that weren't born in September 11th don't even know what happened September 11th, you know? Like you have to keep going. You have to, you got to pass that down. I think you're muted yourself real quick. There you go. <laughs> it's crazy, Alex. Um, again, you, got, you do have to teach the generations you have you have to teach the next generation because just because they don't know don't mean they they can't learn or yeah. find out. There's too much information out there. It's, it's too much information out there. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. So, um, again, I want to I want to to uh, thank you again for for joining me on the podcast. Um, it's been a, it's been an honor to to watch you in the uh, the cage and also uh, watch what you do now. I know that you had a uh, uh, New Year's. Uh, what'd you do for New Year's? Oh man, no, New Year's. No, I, I didn't do. I didn't do anything for New Year's, man. I you know I'm, I'm boring. <laughs> Alex, I'm boring. I, I you know I, I, I chilled at. I chilled out. I chilled out. Of, no matter of fact, no New Year's. I brought it in. I had, I had the DJ for for New. But if 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 I didn't have the DJ, I I'd probably be at home. But I DJ this year just like I did last year. I brought in a new year, you know, making money. And that's just a good sign that, you, that later down the line, you're going to keep that moving. Yep. But, uh, but and, and then I had another DJ. I, I DJed uh, a young lady's uh, Sweet 16. And and with even even with the pandemic, you know, the, I see the kids, even the 16-year-olds were all staying safe. They kept, they kept their mask on, you know, and they tried, you know, they tried their best, you know, not to let the pandemic ruin it. You know, and, you know, just mess up their situation, but being safe at the same time. So, and I'm, I'm behind the booth, so I keep my mask on. And I stay, you know, I stay away from everyone anyway. So, <laughs> again, I, I love doing what I do. And, and, and you still got to pay the bills, man. You still yep. got to pay the bills. Yeah, life still goes on, right? Life still goes on, man. And, and, and it's very unfortunate that all, all these people who, who had preconditions and people who haven't had preconditions, who has succumbed to this uh this vi this virus man, this disease? It's just it's, it's just it makes me sad that I that it's, I felt like our government could have did more to to help help with this situation, man. You know what I'm saying? A lot of unnecessary lives being lost because I don't I don't think our, our government uh, reacted fast enough. Actually, uh, at first it was a joke, and then then it was too late. Yeah, it, it was a, it was a joke. It was a joke at first because mm. you know. People of higher higher authorities made it a joke, and then and then nah, it's Definitely. too late. Yep. So. Now, 2021. Hopefully, everyone, uh, you know, can, can we can all get on board. We can all come together as Americans, and we can all keep it moving to where make we can we can we can make everyone safe again, man. So we can get back to being normal. 
Yep. Thank. Absolutely. A hundred. Yeah, but uh, again, thank you so much for coming on, ladies and gentlemen. This was Houston, the assassin, Alexander. Thank uh, you so Alex, much. Wait, you know, you know, I give a shout out to our podcast. We got, we got the Elements Live, the Elements Live podcast that we do every Monday, seven uh, seven Central, and we bring on all these, you know, all these big stars like you do for yourself. <laughs> uh, that's one thing. And then, and go uh, check out the Houston Alexander Foundation. Check our website, and um, and if you're trying to get, you know, you're trying to get in touch with me, you can get reach me at halexanderomaha at gmail.com. I'm doing all type of type of stuff like this. No, and I believe with all the negative that's happened with this pandemic, man, I think it's, it's brought us all closer together because Absolutely. put us all on the same playing field, Alex. Yes. That where we're doing things like this, and it, and we're just, we're just making we're just making it more, and we're all more impressionable because when you can get in someone's, you see someone's living room, or you can see <laughs> someone, and it, it just makes everybody even. You know, yes. so you got you got people who are on national TV. You can see their liver rooms. You know, it, it just it makes everybody human. Well, yeah, so, it does. You know, so guys, get a hold of me. Um, and I'm still teaching the next generation of MMA um, stars too, because uh, I, I got a boxer. Her name is uh, Ellie Grapp that we're working with, and uh, we're working with a, a ferocious um, MMA guy. His name is Ryan Coleman Jr., who okay. he, who worked with me at 15 because he, he was a four-time state wrestling champ. Um, with the Jardine fight. He was one of, he was, oh, really? he's, he, so watch out for them. There you go. So again, just follow me on all my social media sites. Houston Alexander. There you go, guys. You know where to find them. Thank you so much. You know again. Where to find. Yeah. You know where to find me, brother. <laughs>